Previously, I created music using artwork that had elements of sheet music. You'll see in these images that they include a series of lines that could be seen as the musical staff. When you have an image that has something in common with sheet music, it gives you a stronger starting point when you're turning the image into music. When you look at the Mona Lisa, you can see that it has nothing in common with sheet music. They seem worlds apart, but we can always bring them together. Let's turn this Mona Lisa into sheet music. I've drawn five lines that can represent the staff on a piece of sheet music. I've chosen vertical lines because there is more detail in that central area of the image and that will give us a greater indication of where to place the notes. I've drawn a blue line following the shapes in the image. It is this line that is going to tell us where to place the notes. Let's hide the Mona Lisa for a moment. Currently, this is what we have to work with. Let's make it horizontal, like a piece of sheet music. We can now add circles that will be the notes in our sheet music. I'm going to use that blue line to tell me where to place them. Now it looks a lot like sheet music. I'm going to go into Sibelius first and input these notes. I've inputted the notes into music notation software. I'm using the free version of Sibelius. I'll put a link in the description. At this stage, there is no variation in the notes. I've used only quarter notes because the image only tells us which pitch the note should be. It doesn't give us any information on how long each note should be held for. There is space to change the note lengths and add pauses, and it is these variations that will create a melody but let's listen to how it sounds before we make further changes. I've now added variations in note length and I've added some pauses. The pauses create small groupings of notes and this makes it more interesting. Let's have a listen. It's a group of three, then two, then three, then two, then five and then six. Repetition is fundamental to music and repeating group sizes can be interesting. It's interesting when you have repetition in one area and then change in another. The group size repeats but there is still variation in pitch. There are so many things to explore when you're creating music. I've added some chords and a bass line. Let's hear how it sounds. That's a beginning, but this piece of music definitely needs more parts. So I've returned to my version of the Mona Lisa because one image can lead to many different melodies. Before we chose to create a staff that was straight and vertical, but that's just one option. This time I've added curved lines that can be our staff. I've then drawn a blue line that follows the shapes in the image. I've drawn circles along that blue line and that's going to give us some more musical notes. Those curved lines look less like sheet music, but they are still functional. I can still tell where to place the notes. Here are the notes without any variations. 
This is solely the changes in pitch. I think it's good to listen to it this way before making any decisions about note length and pauses. It is a chance to listen and respond to what's there instead of just charging forward. Let's listen to what it sounds like so we can focus on pitch in isolation and then decide what changes to make. Now it has more variations in note length and there are also pauses in the music that make it more interesting. Let's hear how it sounds. The pauses create groups of notes. The sequence is interesting because nearly every other grouping is a group of three. In some ways, music is about patterns, so let's go with the pattern that's almost there. I'm going to change this so every other group is a group of three. To do this, I've repeated one group of notes. The repetition really adds to the music. Let's listen to how it sounds. I've added chords and a bass line. Let's hear how it sounds. I've also created this version of the Mona Lisa. It's influenced by surrealism and artists like Dali. The realistic aspects of the original work are abstracted and it creates a contrast between realism and abstraction. This is a contrast that works well because it's two extremes that balance each other out. I can convert this image to use as another section. As we've already seen, it doesn't matter whether I draw lines that are straight or curved. Either will be functional as a musical staff. I've drawn an orange line that responds to the shapes that are already present on the canvas. I've then added circles that can become the notes on our musical staff. At this stage, there is no variation in note length. It needs more changes before it becomes a melody but let's hear how it sounds. I've now added the variation that was needed. I've become fascinated by the groupings of notes and repeating the notes in a pattern. This sequence is 2, 3, 3, 2, 3, 3, 5, 5, 5, 4, 4, 2, 3, 3, 4. I've said that these two groups contain three notes when it looks more like four. That curved shape is a tie and it ties the notes together so they behave as one note. Visually, it looks like four, 
but it sounds like three. Let's have a listen. I've added some chords and a bass line. Let's hear how it sounds now. I've added the different sections together and merged them into a larger piece of music. I then exported the MIDI from Sibelius and then imported that MIDI into Ableton Live. I've altered the instruments and I'm pleased with the result. I usually play the finished version in Ableton Live but instead I'm going to play the animated music video that I created as part of this Mona Lisa project. Enjoy. <laughs> 